Good morning, this is Blair with the Live and Learn Gardening Channel in the Central Texas area, specifically the Austin urban area. And I wanted to talk to you, I've got a dog tail here, I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> um, but I wanna talk to you a little bit about um, my garden this year. And first I wanna be honest with you, one, I have not had all of my coffee, so I'm gonna be drinking a little bit of that. Um, <laughs> and do, um, I have been growing for eight years. And this is by far my most productive garden. I think every year I do a little bit better. Um, this year in particular, I did a really good job getting started really early in the season. And um, and I've just had a lot of success. It's also a really good year um, from a weather perspective. So last year, uh, August in particular was pretty awful here in Texas, uh, but the whole spring and really the whole gardening season was pretty rough. So if you started last year and last year was your first year, maybe even your second year, maybe the year you decided to get an extra bed or whatever it is, don't feel discouraged. Um, one, it takes a long time. It's a lifelong process uh, to become a gardener and two, Last year was particularly rough, um, and and I don't want you to think this is me. You know, one year in, two years in, even I can show you some pictures um, from my first garden. It was, you know, it was a garden and it was great, and I grew some things um, less than I expected, more than I probably should have expected in retrospect. Um, but I discovered that I've killed more plants. Certainly, I've discovered that I kill more plants certainly than. Um, <laughs> that anybody maybe has a right to, but I think everybody does. Everybody kills a lot of plants. You gotta, you gotta crack a lot of eggs to make an omelet, I guess. And, and that is what gardening is to me. Gardening is, um, trying things. Sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't. This year I've been particularly lucky. Um, I'll show you some interesting stuff though when I turn you around to show you the tour. Um, that, sorry, that's my neighbor's kid. <laughs> um, that uh we're used to kids around here um but uh it's funny i got up at silly early to so it's because my kid sleeps in a little bit and i thought this will give me plenty of time to to record a video and it'll be quiet and and then of course my neighbor's kid gets up early but that's awesome um, but anyway so um uh what was i talking about oh yeah i'm just gonna walk you through my garden uh this is um mid-may um, this is, I can't remember if I made my fourth garden video. I think it's my fourth one this season. And this is just gonna walk you through kind of the progress of everything. Everything's really uh, kind of in full flush right now. It's before it gets hot here in Texas. I'm sure in a couple of weeks it'll be, you know, a different story. Things will start showing stress and things like that. But um, just kind of take it with a grain of salt. This is my eighth year gardening. And mostly I'm here to just show you some tips, inspire you, get you excited about what you can grow in Austin. Certainly a little bit of patience. <laughs> so anyway, we'll get started. I will also say I'm a little bit sniffly this morning. It's not a cold, it's allergies. I have the infamous Austin allergies, uh, despite being outside like all the time. All right, here we go. All right, the peppers. Oh my gosh, I have to show you a couple things. Um, my celery is doing really well. Uh, the real test is going to be how it does in the summer in this location. Um, I definitely planted these peppers, probably in a little bit too much shade. They're going to be a little behind for now. I'll talk to you about the oranges in a minute. Um, they're going to be a little bit high behind for now, um, but, uh, but but they'll catch up. Oh my gosh, look at these. Okay, so I do think this is an ancho poblano after all. Um, if you watched one of my earlier videos, I was thinking maybe it was a shishito because the peppers we're looking, sorry to put down my coffee, um, we're looking really similar to the shishito, but these are getting a lot bigger. So I do think this is an Ancho Poblano. Oh, there's a second one. I didn't even see that guy. Um, so I think, I think this is going to be a very prolific Ancho Poblano. Um, these are my shishitos. I have not picked them for dinner yet. Um, my plan was to pick them yesterday and then I got busy. Um, but I've definitely got, uh, a full kind of appetizer portion, snack, side, whatever portion of, um, of those peppers in here. All right, and that's kind of a cool thing about the shishitos because you pick them green. You can eat them a little earlier while we're waiting. It does feel like it takes forever for peppers to change color. Um, like these guys, oh wow, those are looking great. Those are sweet banana peppers. Um, and I can never remember quite what the tone of yellow is. 
Uh, that means they're ready, but I, I don't think that's ready. So I'm gonna let that keep going. Okay, these guys, they're huge. Um, there's not as many new ones on the plant, um, but there's some really big, pretty ones. So I can't wait for those to change color and then pluck them off and get some more. Uh, and just as far as peppers, that guy over there, pointing with my coffee cup, um, is doing really well too, and it's starting to change colors, which is great. All right, so let's talk about the oranges. Um, I wish I took a picture. I, I'll see if I did, I don't think I did. Yesterday, I took two cuties, and I cut them up, because I saw on Google that, not Google, on YouTube, that if you put oranges in, that will distract the pill bugs from eating your uh, young bean plants. So I had some old oranges, they're about to go bad anyway, and I cut them up, and I put them out in the garden. And here's the deal. <laughs> Something, somebody said that I could um, reuse them multiple days in a row, and I'd just come out here and I'd scrape off the bugs. Well, that doesn't seem to be the case. Um, this is all that's left of them. I put them out at like three o'clock yesterday. There's a pile of bugs next to them, which makes me think, and, and all my sprouts are doing really well. So I think it worked. Well, almost all of them. This guy over here definitely got, um, got chewed on a little. But everybody else is doing pretty well. So I think it worked. I'm gonna put more oranges out. I also put out diatomaceous earth. I don't know if you can see the remnants of that on the ground. It's like a, that whitish stuff that's on the ground. Um, I think it at least distracted whatever was out here and was gonna eat my sprouts. Not real sure. Um, yeah, I know these are, these are planted pretty densely, but I, I'm expecting a few casualties. Um, but yeah, but the other thing makes me think maybe there was like a rat or a raccoon involved. Oh no. Oh no. Something that was sitting in my garden bed last night knocked over my pepper plant. I'm gonna have to stake that. Pause. Alright, this is my um, bamboo collection. Got a little bit of it. Um, this is my bamboo collection from when I used to have bamboo in my backyard. Uh, don't worry, my neighbor has tons. I can always get more. Here's my bamboo stake. Stick this guy in the ground. Right here, yes, this disturbs the roots a little bit, but this guy needs. Oh, hey, worm. What's up, bro? Give my plant a hug. That's so nice. Hopefully, the roots were not damaged in this process. I don't know what the heck was sitting in here. It was big enough. Uh, I was able to basically squish this plant completely down. I just sat on it. Must be a raccoon. I have to check my, my animal cams. Okay, crisis avoided. The pepper plant is okay. It's not knocked over anymore. Okay, there is an orange in there too, which makes me think. Maybe it was a combination of things. Maybe it was, we'll call it a raccoon or, or what. Um, but my seedlings are okay. And so I might do it again just to, just to protect those seedlings. These are um, little baby, oh gosh, I wanna say one of them is a watermelon. I think this one's a sugar baby watermelon. And this one is a Madhu Ross melon which is like a small personal size melon. And I do think the oranges protected them. There's ants on them right now, but I think the oranges protected them. I mean, I'm just throwing it out there because everything else I planted, there was one I had over here. Oh great, there's a slug now. No slug. Nope, 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 get out of, oh, that's really gross. Ew, icky, okay. <laughs> eh. Bravery is not uh, the lack of fear, it is the, um, doing it anyway. Okay, let's talk about these eggplants. Um, oh, I did, one modification. I did remove the, um, all of the 
green bean plants that were over here. And I'll show you where they are. So the spider mites just got too bad. They're, they're all over this thing and I decided it was worth, um, and plus it keeps raining and so they weren't really drying out. I decided it was worth uh, trying to dry them in my dry greenhouse here. Back to the eggplants, which are doing quite well. Um, no eggplants yet, but these guys really thrive in like July. I think it was July, June, July, August. They, I mean, when it gets really hot, these guys are happy. Funny thing is, I cannot remember what kind of eggplant either of these are. You know, it's, it's funny, a lot of the gardening channels, especially the ones that have bigger gardens, I think, just label them. And then every year I find a couple of things that I don't have labels for, and then I'm digging back through videos or photos hoping that I um, identified at least one time what that was. Um, and I can't remember if I, I don't think I could find uh, what these guys were. I think they're just basic ones, though. It was whatever I could find at the store. All right. Um, but now you can really see how much I've let this um, blackberry bush kind of take over this bed a little bit. Um, I'm going to tear it out as soon as the melons come in, if they do, and the cucumbers. Um, because this is, so this is the second year on this vine. I let this grow last year. And so everything that has growth on it is actually a second year vine. And once it's done fruiting, it's done. Um, and I can tear it out. There is one little vine over there, kind of toward the middle or not vine, I think they're called stalks. One stalk toward the, um, the high nut cucumber right here, that's a new stalk. You'll see it has no fruit on it. It's actually a little lighter and green color. Um, so that will technically produce next year, but that's right in the middle of my garden. Um, this one was kind of over to the side, which is why I let it go. Um, but this one, I'm, I'm gonna pull that out too. I probably could already pull that out. Here, volunteering, or invasively growing, I guess, all the way through, that's also, um, blackberry so just fair warning this is a bed grew all the way up from the bottom and it originally originated all the way over here so blackberries are pretty invasive I love them they're one of my favorite things that I grow but um but they are pretty invasive so you gotta keep on top of them it's my blackberry bush this guy is almost ripe maybe another day or two it has to be fully fully black like not even a hint of red um, to get the really sweet ones, so. All right, let's talk about tomatoes. So I've got these guys over here. They're, let's see, what's that? Probably two and a half feet, maybe three feet tall. Um, and we definitely have blooms. Uh, these are looking really nice. So these are gonna produce a lot at once. This is a determinate tomato. It's for like making paste and stuff. It's called Red Pride. Um, this one has less blooms, but I'm sure it's just a little bit behind. And then that one over there is called, I think it's called Yellow Jubilee. And it's just a mid-sized yellow tomato. Um, and I had planted these three thinking, oh man, they look really small. I should probably plant another one. And I actually did plant another one, but it got eaten by an animal and I didn't get to the store to get a replacement. Um, and it was probably the right call. <laughs> Um, I probably do want to plant something in that little gap over there uh, just to cover the soil once I especially once I pull out the onions but because um, I, I do like having something over the soil um, but that's probably enough tomato bushes uh, for, for this so I'll have to find something maybe a little more low-lying um, there's oh this is my oregano it's got a pretty little flower on it I don't worry about herbs flowering um, they flower they don't usually spread or anything um, and they're just pretty, pretty little purple flowers um, on this one. And I think the thyme has white or purple flowers as well. Um, this one, that's a, this is a, these herbs are perennial. This one over here is an annual. I'm letting this flower for the bees and the bugs and all the things, um, and then I'll pull it out. Uh, let's see, the onions I probably just need to pull out of the ground. I think they're about done, though I'd, I'll have to look at the number of days to maturity on them. Um, they're not done, they're very close. Uh, they're starting, they're all laying over, which that's how you can tell, by the way, that a onion is getting close to ready to harvest. It'll lay over, it'll start sucking the nutrients out of the green parts, and then, um, and you can actually accelerate the process a little bit by turning it on its side, or um, by laying it over, by bending it over. That'll help the process of it kind of sucking the 
um, the juice out of the leaves and, uh, and then kind of bulking up the bulb. But I have noticed, I don't think these bulbs, I mean, I'll have to go back and look at my videos, I don't think these bulbs are getting any bigger, so I think it's probably time to harvest. Um, that next to it is mint. Mint is also super invasive. See how it's spilling all the way down there? I don't need that much mint. Nobody needs that much mint. Um, but if you want to feel successful, grow mint, but do not put it in a bed. You'll notice this is not, this is not in a bed. This is in um, these little, they're like little pockets on the outside of my garden. Um, in this concrete and I have pulled all the runners off that try to run into the main bed because mint is super, super invasive. Um, all right, let's talk about normal tomatoes. Okay, you'll notice a big change here. I pulled out all the carrots, finally. Um, I uh, got my daughter out here. We picked all the carrots. Uh, there should be a video on that. I think will have already been released by the time I release this one. Um, and we got this thing cleaned out. Uh, we did knock off some of this um, volunteer tomato down here, which is totally fine. I've got a lot of volunteer tomato this year of this. Um, I think it's Tessa's land current. The more, the more I see it grow, the more I think it's this Tessa's land current that I grew last year. Um, it's a real fun little red tomato. It's actually awesome that it's growing off the side of the bed uh, because it's my daughter's favorite to pick and this way it'll be at her height. Um, these tomatillos are doing okay. The fruit isn't really setting as well as I'd like it to, so I probably need to do a little more research on that. Um, I also need to come in and tie a few of these guys up. See, this one's hanging off the side there. Um, that's that's also what happens. Um, I'm glad I went and tied up a bunch yesterday, but that's what happens when there's a lot of rain too. Um, and if I were to not tie this guy up, it were to have some fruit on it and then a heavy rain, um, probably right there, it would snap. And so um, that's why I tie everything up, give it a little extra support. Um, it's funny, I was debating how wide to make these uh, uh, garden panels. This was originally a 16 foot panel and I ended up choosing to, to have it fit inside the bed. And I almost think I could have had it stick off the sides of the bed because these <laughs> plants have gotten so big. Um, I've been able to kind of splay them out a little bit again because I didn't get around to planting. Um, I was gonna plant four across, this is like a, a seven foot bed. I was gonna plant four across, I ended up planting three. I think that's the right number. There's two tomatillos. The plants look so small when you first get them. <laughs> it's, I do this every year and I've done this eight years in a row and I always know the tomatoes get big and I tell myself that and then I do it anyway, over plant. Um, but this year I didn't, just mostly just didn't get around to it. But I've got one, two, and then I transplanted one of those Tessa's land currants in case I had to pull out the others. Um, and it's doing really well. And it's um, it's gonna take over this whole corner of the bed. There's still that fennel in there, um, which I probably need to pull some fennel off of. Um, and then over here, there's three as well. Um, there's some green beans tucked in there. That might be, we'll see. We'll see if we get any green beans. Um, this is an early girl tomato. So this one will probably produce and then be done after a month or two. Um, but it's pretty big too. And then these guys, these are cherry tomatoes. I've got a yellow plum here. Let me see if I can find the fruit for you. Oh yeah, there it is. That's that first big flush of fruit right in there. So those are the yellow plums. That's probably about the size they're gonna get to. And now we're just waiting on them to change color. Um, oh wait, no, those guys. Never mind. they're gonna get bigger. <laughs> There's the original ones. I thought those were the originals. So that's the yellow plum. And then the sun gold, here's the first flush of them down there. See how they're kind of white? That means we're getting there. Um, they'll probably still take an agonizingly long time to actually change color, but um, but that's kind of the size they're gonna get to. Um, and there's lots of them on the plant, so that's really exciting. All right, so this is my squash plant. And I went ahead and opened it up a few minutes ago, and even that long kind of worries me. Um, vine borers are just so I'm looking for them now. I don't see them. I do see mosquitoes though. Yay! Um, so I've got two zucchinis that are doing really well here. There's also a little celery in the back. I've got two little zucchinis on this plant. I'm really happy with that. Um, that's about the number I usually get, period, on my plants. 
um, and they don't look this big and happy and healthy when they produce them because my vine borers are so aggressive here. Um, I think this row cover has, has really helped a lot. I talked to another local farmer the other day and they were telling me they basically do, they can't do the hand pollination, but they cover with, with row cover. And then he says he just sets a timer and he knows that he's gonna lose his plants um, within a matter of weeks. Uh, all right, so here is, oh, I think this one fertilized, yay! This is my first ever patty pan squash. Pretty excited about that. Um, and then there's another one back there with all the ants crawling on it that I'm gonna fertilize today. Actually, I might just do that right now. Um, okay, so this one, I want it to be true to form. Sometimes I cross them just for fun, but, um, oh my gosh. What? There's a bee. Hi, bees, two bees. Um, anyway, okay, so this guy is ready to pick. I left it one extra day yesterday. Um, that's just a crookneck squash. I think I might have cross-pollinated it with the zucchini. I, my husband doesn't love the crookneck squash taste as much. Um, and so I do the, no, I think he likes the, the ones from home. He doesn't like the ones from the store for sure. Oh, okay, the bee just tried to pollinate the one in my hand. <laughs> um, but, uh, but anyway, so I cross-pollinate with the zucchini. I think it adds a, a nice texture is a little less spongy, I guess. Anyway, all right, so let me pollinate this. But um, it appears there are bees in here, so I don't have to worry about it too much, but I'm just taking this male portion and using it to paint the female portion. Okay, okay I'm gonna wait for this bee to leave, and then I'm gonna close up the, uh, the zucchini bush over here. So, as we're waiting for this last bee to leave, I think this is a good time to talk about um, about bugs, especially stinging bugs and kids in the garden. Um, I, I have talked to my daughter since she was probably two years old pretty incessantly about um, how much we love bees, um, wasps, and other creatures in our garden. It's over here now. Um, uh, but also how dangerous they are and how while we love them we give them lots and lots of space and we don't go near them we don't try to touch them and uh, if we feel one buzzing near our head we don't swing at it um, we don't anger or upset it we just kind of leave it be and that's that's a conversation we've had for many many years um, since she was since she was two um, he, he hears Maybe even before she was two, the first time she saw a bee, um, I told her how much we love them and how wonderful they are, um, and she has a healthy appreciation for the good work that they do, but she also has a healthy, what I would call, respect for them, and understanding that we leave bees alone. Uh, I've closed this back up. I think it's, well, I think it's pretty airtight. Um, airtight enough, there's little gaps down here, but like I said, vine borers seem to be like on a kind of a beeline sort of thing, so I'm hoping they'll hop over mine and go go on to the next garden. All right, these are just my um, my eggplant. You'll see the one on the left is doing a little bit better than the one on the right. I think I did have some. Oh yeah, there he is. Okay, this guy. Okay, that right there. It's a perfect example. That is a flea beetle. You see them? You squish them. <laughs> They're bad for the plant. Um, he is the cause of a lot of the um, the holes in the plant. And the other thing that they'll do is they'll get into the like the new growth on the plant, and they'll damage it, and then they'll cause it to be stunted, and they'll cause the flowers not to form. And that's really what's happened on on this plant. Um, is I've got holes. I've got. Um, stunted leaves because they chew on this new growth I think and and it really causes them to be stunted so if you see flea beetles ever you say I like that you just I know this is gross and we gotta be brave here we gotta be brave to protect our plants you catch them and you squish them on the plant and he's gone um I hate doing it <laughs> uh but uh but that's that's organic gardening uh sometimes you're gonna encounter 
Um, oh, there we go. Look at that. I always love the eggplant flowers. They're almost all, I think they're all purple. At least all the ones I've seen are purple. Um, and they're so pretty. Hopefully that guy pollinates. I haven't had any eggplants yet this year, but it's, it's not hot yet. Like, I'm not worried. Um, but yeah, see, he probably did this damage right here. See, see how the fuzziness is eaten off there? That was probably him. And that kind of damage will just make it really hard for the plant to grow. This one just seems to have gotten a little stunted. I think they just, they just really chewed on in the wrong places. So it'll catch back up. I mean, um, that, that branch is basically broken. So I'm going to take that off. Um, basically when you see a branch that's broken, just go ahead and take it off. Or if you see a leaf that's like, here, I'll show you. Like this one, it's starting to yell a little. It's got lots of holes in it. It looks really unhealthy. Oh, oh, whoops. Okay. I think that white thing right there. So this white thing is the larval form of something called a mealybug destroyer. A pretty clever name, but uh, basically it eats a ton of aphids and it's a huge beneficiary for your garden. It's even better than lady beetles, which are also known as um, ladybugs. Uh, these guys, I always kind of preserve and set them off to the side. I'm going to find another one here in a second um, that's like a closer to the adult form but basically um, anytime you see one of these white fuzzy bugs it's a good sign that you're a good organic gardener or well I think so because um, you're preserving uh, the kind of there it is um, the kind of uh, folks that uh, that are really going to be a huge benefit to your garden this one just has some stuff stuck to the top of it um, but I think it's still the same one if not it's a different um, a different predator that will also help out in your garden. It basically looks white and fuzzy with a little bit of brown stuff on top is that one. It's hard to see. I know in, in the camera, but that one just looks like a little fuzzy white thing on your leaf. And uh, anyway, it's a good guy. Um, all right, here's my Scarlet Runner bean. Yay. Um, it's starting to maybe I'll get up toward Gerlin's vines soon and we'll push it over there and it'll go right up that trellis hopefully. All right. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> Don't panic. This stuff is fine. So this is called slime mold. This happens when you have um, warm weather and a lot of rain. And we've had a lot of rain. Um, I wouldn't touch it. I don't, but it's not dangerous. Uh, your animals probably won't eat it. Um, definitely don't let your kid eat it or play with it. Um, but it's mold. Um, it's super cool looking mold. And it's actually a good sign. It usually is on uh, wood chips or, or mulch or cover or whatever. And it, it's not dangerous. Uh, I think if you poke it, oh my gosh, of course I'm gonna have to poke it now. I think if you poke it, this may be the one that it like, it like looks like it's bleeding or something. No, not this one. It just looks like gunk. It just looks like uh, goo, basically. All right, I have an, not an unhealthy, I'll say a very healthy uh, appreciation for the things that are in my garden and um and the decomposers in particular i mean they what they are what make great soil and so this mold here is basically just decomposing this these wood chips um and it's actually totally friendly oh yeah see it's kind of like changing color where i damaged it sorry slime mold <laughs> um but um it, but it's part of the decomposition process and um i freaked out the first time i saw it i think the first one i had was like orange and i poked it and it like had red ooze come out and <laughs> I freaked out but um but there's nothing wrong with a little slime mold it's actually kind of a cool science thing you can tell your kid about it and um tell them not to touch it of course I mean I think my biggest thing with the garden is just having a healthy respect for the things that are in our garden and kind of leaving a lot of them alone and this is one that I leave alone sweet potatoes they are looking really good um it does not seem that the pill bugs are going to bother them. Uh, it's been raining and they've kind of left them alone, even though they're technically sprouts. It does not seem like they're as tasty to, to uh, pill bugs. And I did realize the other day that people often called those pill bugs potato bugs, and that's probably why they were attacking my potatoes so aggressively. Um, I think I mentioned this before, but uh, sweet potatoes are completely different, just like 
sector of the genome than um, than potatoes. And so things that are interested in the pill bug or the pill bugs, which were interested in the potatoes, and other creatures that were interested in the potatoes, are going to be far less interested in um, sweet potatoes. And so they, they seem to be doing just fine. Um, they will vine all over the place. They will take over this whole bed. Um, I'll pull out the garlic soon and they will also probably spill all the way around this. That's part of the reason I put them over here is because um, I'm going to try to keep them out of the grass so my husband can can mow um, around this. Um, <laughs> but hey, if they choke out some of these uh, Johnson weeds so I don't have to pull them out, that would make me quite happy. So um, so yeah, but that's my sweet potatoes. They're looking pretty good. Um, I've got five in there. Five? No, six. Which is probably too many for this bed, but eh, what the heck, we'll see what happens. Sometimes it's fun to experiment. Lettuce is starting to uh, go to seed, which is awesome because I'm ready to pull it out of the garden. I haven't decided what I'm going to put in over here. I actually may put in, if those sweet potato slips that I've been growing uh, do any better than, or, or do what I'm hoping they will do, I'll probably plant sweet potatoes over here once the lettuce is done. Um, you can plant sweet potatoes all the way through June, I think. Um, they love the heat, and so just as long as you have enough time uh, before the end of the frost, you're good. Um, this is more slime molds, a couple days old. Um, it's not dog poop. <laughs> it does look like it, um, but again, that's that's harmless. You can just leave it alone, let it decompose. Um, I just saw some more. We've had a lot of rain, y'all. So that's that's more yellow slime mold. Um, I've, I've seen orange before. I've seen like more of a white. Um, that, that's what that is. It's harmless. If it's unsightly and it bothers you, you can, I guess, pull it out. I don't know. Wear gloves if you're going to do that. Uh, I don't think it'll hurt you, but you know, give it, give it some space. Um, this is a nostrum. I'm super excited because this one decided to volunteer in a place where I actually think it will be able to grow because it's got a lot of shade in the summer. Um, and I think it'll spill over the side and look really, really pretty, um, hopefully. So that is excellent. I'm going to do a quick update on my figs. They are looking great. They are nowhere near um, ripening yet, uh, but there's still a heck of a lot of them in there, and they look pretty healthy, healthy and happy. So I don't know when they're going to ripen. I've had them stick around through the whole summer and not ripen before. I'll have to go look and, and see, um, but it's always not when I expect it. I think it's like June, and I would expect them to be, or I would think they'd be ripening soon because there's so many and they look like they're ready to go, but um, they seem to have some sort of seasonal component to them that, I don't know, is not, uh, is not up to me, obviously. Uh, my forage plant's doing really well, so see these little fuzzy bits at the top here? That is about to flower pretty soon, so we'll get to see some pretty borage flowers soon, which is excellent. This sunflower, um, I think I mentioned on my last video that I was gonna have a bunch of toddlers over. This one did get beheaded. I think probably someone was sitting there and leaned back and it got knocked over, um, which is fine. I need to just pull that. Well, I say I need to pull that out, but it is producing side shoots. Uh, we'll see. I need to at least lop the head off of it. Um, I did clean up my sunflowers a little bit. There were some like in the pathway, some really little ones, and I decided to clean them up. I put a gate around that one, like a dog, Thing around it, um, like a dog gate around it, used for puppies, and um, seems to have kept the toddlers out. Um, and uh, and these guys are doing okay, so we'll see. Um, I think, oh yeah, see the side shoots. So this one got beheaded a while ago, and the side shoots seem to be ready and willing to produce sunflowers. So maybe there'll be smaller ones. We'll see. This is a pretty shady spot. We'll see if we end up with sunflowers, but. Um, but it's kind of fun to have volunteers, uh, something I didn't plant and definitely wouldn't have planted in this spot, um, but that I think could produce some pretty, pretty cool uh, flowers to put in my house this year. Ah, quick update on the sweet potatoes. Um, these slips are definitely producing at least a few. We've got two coming up, one right there. I'm not sure if you can see it against the dirt. And then one right there. It's all still doing excellent. Um, I do have my backup basil over there in the uh, garden shed. Um, green stalks still doing great. I don't think I have anything in particular on this this week. Um, there's strawberries on there, but I haven't gotten any yet. <laughs> um, there's a few little ones here and there, but I never see them ripen, so something's getting them before they ripen. I'm gonna have to come up. I may end up, oh, oh, I remember now. My plan 
my plan was to put these in the greenhouse um, once the berries got close to ripening to see if I could actually get some berries. Uh, we'll see. All right. Um, this nostrum, it's starting to get kind of brown at the bottom. I'm debating whether to pull it out or just leave it. It is really pretty. Um, but I think that's, oh, I need to pull out this guy. This is a uh, lettuce that has very clearly gone past its life. You can just snap it off. Um, this will be bitter anyway. There's no point in trying to eat it. I mean, you could, but it's not going to taste great. All right, I'm going to gotta give up on that kale plants and, uh, and cut it out of the garden. I'm not going to want to eat those anyway. They're just It's just covered in caterpillars. Whew. My audio's on. That's good. Uh, it was not on, apparently, when I videoed this like two days ago. Um, thank you for hanging out with me uh, today. I really enjoy talking about my garden, and I really appreciate uh, you watching, if you're still here, um, <laughs> watching all the way through and, and seeing kind of the progress on everything that I'm building. Again, I want to be an inspiration to anybody that's thinking about gardening, especially if you've got kids. It's a blast um, to watch them get to pull things out of the ground. I think my daughter probably eats a couple more vegetables uh, because she does pull a few of those things out of the ground and we can tell her where things come from. And she, uh, she has that little bit of, oh, I picked that. I grew that. Um, she ate some squash last night, which I was really suspecting she would not eat at dinner because we talked about the fact that we'd grown it together. Um, so anyway. We'll see uh, if that, that really improved. I don't know if that <laughs> marginally or, or, or majorly uh, improves her vegetable uh, intake, but it makes me feel like uh, like at least she's engaging with her food. Um, she's four, by the way, in case that uh, she just turned four, if that, in case that gives you a point of reference as where we are in our vegetable journey. Um, but it's a lot of fun to garden with kids, and it's also just a lot of fun to garden. It gives me a lot of peace. I don't do it as an extra work thing I have to do. I found a lot of peace in it over the years, um, and I highly encourage you to at least give it a chance and see if, if it's a peaceful thing for you. If it's a stressful thing, don't do it. It. gardening's not meant to be stressful um, just go to go to the store and buy your food there you don't need to grow your own food at home um, but but it is it can be a really fun hobby um, and you can do it and if you have any interest um, even if you think you have a brown thumb uh, give yourself a chance if you find joy in plants if you find joy in in helping people um, or indoor plants grow I think if you just kind of pay attention to the plants and check on them every day if you can put them in a place where it's real easy to to check on them and uh, and create a space that is beautiful that's why I have flowers in my garden it, it inspires me to come out here just to see the flowers and then I notice that something is is off or needs to be tended to um, I also now have a table and chairs in my garden space I think that's really important too um, having a place to sit and just look at your plants will make you engage with them more. Um, and so anyway, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for listening to me ramble about my garden and show you all the things that I'm really excited about um, or complain about um, the oranges and, and all those fun things. But uh, have a wonderful day. Uh, you can do this. You got this. Give it a shot. You don't have a brown thumb. Nobody has a brown thumb. I'm sure I had a brown thumb. I killed every indoor plant that I had uh, before I had an outdoor automated watered garden. So have a good day. Thanks. Bye.